Muscle is a special organ that transforms chemical energy into movement. How do you think our muscles contract when we smile, jump or cycle? The mechanism of muscle contraction is well understood by the sliding filament theory. According to this model, muscle fibers contract when thin or actin filaments slide over the thick or myosin filaments. To start a muscle contraction, the central nervous system or CNS sends a signal via a motor neuron. The motor neurons along with the connected muscle fibers form a motor unit. In fact, the junction between a motor neuron and sarcolemma of the muscle fiber is called the neuromuscular junction or motor end plate. When a neural signal reaches the motor end plate, it releases a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. This neurotransmitter generates an action potential in the sarcolemma which spreads into the muscle fiber causing the release of calcium ions in the sarcoplasm. The calcium ions further bind to a subunit of troponin on the actin filaments which causes the troponin to change conformation and move the tropomyosin. This unmasks the active sites on actin for myosin to bind to it after consuming energy released by ATP hydrolysis. Myosin binds to actin to form a cross bridge. These cross bridges are very important for muscle contraction. They pull the attached actin filaments to the center of the A band. Moreover, the Z line attached to the actins is also pulled inwards, shortening the sarcomere, thereby causing a muscle contraction. During the contraction, the I bands are reduced, whereas the A bands retain their length. Interestingly, the filaments do not change in length, but merely slide over one another during a contraction. The myosin then releases ADP and inorganic phosphate to go back to its relaxed state, after which a new ATP binds to the myosin head and the cross bridge is broken. The myosin head again hydrolyzes ATP and forms a cross bridge. The stages of cross bridge formation, rotation of myosin head and cross bridge breakage are repeated with different or new actin molecules to cause further sliding. The process repeats till calcium ions are pumped back into the sarcoplasmic cystine, resulting in the masking of actin filaments. This causes the Z lines to return to their original relaxed position. In fact, the repeated activation of muscles may lead to the accumulation of lactic acid due to the anaerobic breakdown of glycogen, causing muscle fatigue. Muscles can be of two types. One, those that undergo aerobic respiration. And two, those that depend on anaerobic process for energy. Muscles that respire aerobically are also called red fibers. They are thus named because these muscles contain a red pigment called myoglobin that stores oxygen. These muscles also have several mitochondria that consume the stored oxygen for ATP production. On the other hand, muscles that show anaerobic activity are called white fibers. 
They are thus named because they have very little myoglobin. They are high on sarcoplasmic reticulum but possess few mitochondria. Consequently, they use anaerobic energy processes. All muscles, however, irrespective of showing aerobic or anaerobic activity, contract via the sliding filament mechanism.